राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 प्रेमानंदे नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पुस्ताय भूतले श्रीमाति भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी पिचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चाच्यदेश तारिणे ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा सो थे बींग द अकेशन ऑफ गंगा पूजा वी बीन एस टू स्पीक सम ऑफ द ग्लोरीज ऑफ मदर गंगा सो द डिसेंट ऑफ मदर गंगा इज डिस्क्राइब टू आस इन श्रीमद भागवतम how uh maharaj sagar was performing ashwamedha yagya and at one point the horse went missing and so he solicited his sons to go and find the horse so this the sons were large number of sons a large number of sons they went to look for the horse and they found the horse beside lord kapila lord kapila was sitting meditating and uh, because lord kapila he teaches sankhya yoga and sankhya yoga is essentially uh meditation along with sankhya philosophy and analyzing the material elements so lord kapila was engaged in meditation and the horse was near him and the sons of sagar they thought that lord kapila was responsible for taking the horse so that was very offensive on their part not only did they think he was responsible for taking the horse but they were prepared to do some physical harm to lord kapila so as a result of their offense against the supreme lord 
the fire of offense burned their bodies to ashes. Not that Lord Kapila burned them to ashes. Lord Kapila is the Supreme Lord. He's not going to exhibit anger or anything like that, but it was the, the, the offense on the part of the sons of Sagar which caused their own bodies to be burned to ashes. So the only way in which these sons of Maharaj Sagar could be relieved from their offense was to bring Mother Ganga down. Mother Ganga was flowing in the heavenly planets as the Mundakini. And Mundakini, this water, is actually the water from the Kajyo Ocean, which had washed the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev when he took his three st steps of land, or when he took one of the steps anyway, it pierced the covering of the universe, and with the piercing of the covering of the universe, it allowed the water of the Kajyo Ocean to come in. And that water was flowing in the heavenly planets as the Mundakini, and it comes down to earth in the form of Mother Ganga. But in order for Mother Ganga to come down to the earth planet, some great austerities were required. The first uh, Maharaj Sagar had some other sons by the separate wife, and he tried, he did austerities, but without success. And then his descendant, his sons tried. So it went like that for, I think, three generations before Maharaj Bhagirat came. Maharaj Bhagirat is described as being very, very great devotee. I was reading Prabhupada's uh, teachings on Bhava Bhakti and they give examples of different quality. They mention nine different qualities which are displayed by one on the level of Bhava Bhakti. And Prabhupada quotes how Maharaj Bhagirat had these different qualities and he described some of the different activities of Maharaj Bhagirat displaying these very high elevated qualities, qualities of a very great devotee. So Maharaj Bhagirat was not just a tapasvi, but he was a devotee. That is real tapasya. The devotees, they have real tapasya. The other tapasvis, their renunciation is meaningless. But the devotee's renunciation is in relation to Krishna. So Maharaj Bhagirat, his devotion was like that. His renunciation was in relation to Krishna. So he performed austerities for a long time and he was able to secure the benediction of Mother Ganga coming. But Mother Ganga had some concerns, but before she came to the earth planet, she said, if I come, the force of my water on the planet will knock the planet out of its situation in the universe. It will knock it out of its orbit because the force of the water will be so great coming down onto the earth planet. So Maharaj Bhagirat arranged that Lord Shiva would take that water on his head because Lord Shiva is the personality of Godhead in this material world. He's very powerful. So he agreed that he would take Mother Ganga on his... He agreed because Lord Shiva is a great devotee and he knows that that water is a foot bath. It's the water which washed the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev. So he's happy to take that water on his head. Just like we accept the water which is offered to the lotus feet of the deity at Arti every day, we come and devotees sprinkle a few drops of water on everyone's head. 
we're happy to get that water because we know that's the Abhishek, it's the, the foot bath water from the Lord. So in the same way, Lord Shiva accepted the water which had washed the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev on his head. So the hair of Lord Shiva, it said, is always wet from the water of the Ganga. But there was another condition. Mother Ganga said, I'm concerned that if I come to that earth planet, people will come and bathe in my waters, sinful people. They will come and bathe in my water and I will have to take all their sinful reactions. We see every day how many, well not so much now with the, with the lockdown, nobody's coming now at this time, but uh, usually it's very common people come to bathe in the water of Mother Ganga, to take the water of Mother Ganga on their head and to bathe in her waters because they know the water of Mother Ganga is very purifying. She takes away the sins of people. So Mother Ganga was concerned that I don't want to take all their sins. That's intelligent, great intelligence. We have to be very careful about taking someone's sinful reactions. Prabhupada mentions about how at the time of initiation a spiritual master accepts person as his disciple and the disciple promises to strictly follow regulative principles. And if they don't follow then the spiritual master has to take some of the consequences for their sinning. And even at the time of initiation, it said the spiritual master accepts the karma of that person. So, we're very cautious about awarding initiation to people. If they're not properly qualified, if they have not properly prepared themselves, for spiritual initiation, then we don't want to give them initiation. So we try to be very careful in giving people initiation. At the same time, you want to encourage people in their Krishna consciousness, you want to try to help them progress and you want to give them some uh, enthusiasm so sometimes the spiritual masters often, they show mercy and they may accept people, although there may be some doubt. But generally, we're very cautious about giving initiation to people. Because taking someone's sinful reactions is not a very pleasant thing. It doesn't make life more comfortable for people. Anyway, Mother, uh, Maharaj Bhagirat told Mother Ganga that, no, no, if you come, yes, sinful people may bathe in your water, but great saintly persons will also come and bathe in your water. And they will neutralize whatever sins these people are. In fact, you'll get more benefit because they will not only neutralize the sins which all these sinful people have left, but they'll give you also nice association with them because they're great sages. And we see many saintly people for many thousands of years have had the habit to reside on the banks of the river Ganga. From all the way up from Gangotri Hardwar, down Allahabad, so many places. Everywhere you go along the Ganga, we'll see people, saintly people, often reside there on the bank, banks of Mother Ganga. So in this way, Maharaj Bhagirat convinced Mother Ganga to come down to this earth planet 
and Maharaj Bhagirat was leading Mother Ganga and it happened that they passed Janamuni's ashram and Janamuni was there doing his puja and his, but the Ganga came and the Ganga came and swept everything away, took away all of his Akshman cup and his different paraphernalia, all gone. So Janamuni thought, what is this? So Janamuni is no ordinary soul. He therefore drank all the Ganga and the Ganga disappeared, drunk by Janamuni. And uh, Maharaj Sagar then realized what happened because he was leading the Ganga, then all of a sudden there's no Ganga. What happened? He came back and then he saw something, oh, must be Janamuni. So he t blessed, took a special uh, mercy from Janamuni, requested him, you please forgive us, but very important, Mother Ganga should come and we want to, she has to go to the sea, she has to first of all wash the ashes of the sons of Maharaj Sagar and so many purposes will be achieved if Mother Ganga comes, you please release her. So Mother Ganga came out from the knee of Janumuni, so she is called Janavi one of the names of Ganga, right? Janavi. So, this way Mother Ganga came to the earth planet and Maharaj uh, Bhagirat takes the Ganges there to wash the ashes of the sons of Sagar and they're all freed from their sins. And then Mother Ganga goes on, flows into the, the sea, right? We have Ganga Sagar there where the Ganges flows into the sea and that Ganga Sagar that is the that became the ashram of Kapila Muni. Lord Kapila resides there even today. Kapila Muni's ashram is there. So the the Ganges water is very very special. It is said that the king of Jaipur, one Maharaja of Jaipur, he had the habit to take his bath every day in Ganga water. But it was arranged, the king of Jaipur was going to England. He was going to visit England by boat, take the boat. There were no flights in this time. He was going on the boat to go to England. So he wanted to still take his bath in Ganga water every day. So he had a special lota made, huge big lota. They still have it there in Jaipur. And he had the whole lota filled with Ganga water. And so he went to England, stayed there sometime, then came back. Every day he took his bath in Ganga water. Some people have that kind of devotion. There are some great devotees of Mother Ganga, like uh, Pundarik Vijanidi. They say he was a great devotee of Mother Ganga. He would feel very sorry to see the people using soap in the water of the Ganga. He would come and offer his obeisances to Mother Ganga. And he would feel very sorry to see how people were polluting the water of the Ganga. Vasudev Datta was also a devotee of Mother Ganga. Kolaveka Sridhar was a devotee of Mother Ganga. Kolaveka Sridhar would spend half of his income every day to worship Mother Ganga. Now some people, when they worship Mother Ganga, they worship for fruitive results. They want something, they want to get some material benefit. But devotees also worship Mother Ganga. They worship Mother Ganga 
to get love of Krishna. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes that in the Kali Yuga, the Lord comes in the form of wood and as water. In the form of wood, the Lord comes as Jagannath, and in the form of water, he comes as Mother Ganga. Similarly, in Bhagavad Gita, in the 10th chapter, Vibhuti Yoga, Lord Krishna says, of flowing rivers, I am the Ganga. So Ganges is the greatest of holy rivers. In Queen Kunti's prayers, in Srimad Bhagavatam, she says, Tvai me nanya vishaya madir madu pate sakrit Rati mudva tambada gange voga mudanvati That as the Ganges forever flows to the sea, let my attraction be born to you in the same spontaneous way. Just like when we go to Ganga, it's always flowing, right? It's always strong current. You go there in the Ganga and <laughs> you try to swim, you go that, that, but you're taken down. So it's always flowing, can carry even the elephant. Sometime, one time that we were taking the elephant to the Ganga and she got stuck in the Ganga, couldn't get out for a while. It was a big problem. Remember that time? Yeah? It was, oh. And she, she was very upset and everybody was there, nobody could do anything. So big elephant, what can you do, you know? But finally they got the idea, let her float down a little bit where there's some pebbles, where the ground is more firm and then she could get out. But when she did get out, she was very upset and she didn't eat for three days. But gives you some idea how strong the current is, you know, that even big elephants can get problems there. So Mother Ganga is very powerful and very merciful that she can purify the sins which people have occurred. But we don't want to take advantage of that. We shouldn't think we can just simply come and do sinful activities and then take bath in the Ganga and nullify herself. That would be very offensive to do like that. We know grand, uh, Grandfather Bhishma, he is the son of Mother Ganga. Maharaj Santanu, he had somehow he met Mother Ganga and he had relationship with her. Mother Ganga promised, she said, I will stay with you, but don't interfere with whatever I do. And so while they were together, she delivered children, one after another. And each time she delivered a child, she would take the child and throw it in the Ganga. So one after another, seven children were thrown in the Ganga. And in this way, Maharaj Santana was becoming very perplexed because he, you know, his, they were his children. He was having the, he was conceiving them in her womb, but she was taking them and throwing them in the Ganga. So Maharaj Santana was very upset. And finally, when the eighth child was delivered, he wouldn't let her take it. He said, no, no, I'm, don't, don't I'm not going to let you throw this one in the Ganga. So then she said, then I'm going. And so Mother Ganga left, Maharaj Santonu. So these children which were thrown in the Ganga, these were the Vasus who had been cursed because of their offenses against Lord Brahma. They had laughed at Lord Brahma when Lord Brahma had become lusty at his daughter. And so for that offense, they became... Uh, the bus, they, they had to be killed. Uh? What did they say? 
Yeah, okay, they were on the earth for a very short, let they be on, on this earth. Anyway, Bhishma is one of these Vasus, he was, and he was saved, and of, he's the, the surviving son of Maharaj Santanu. And later on, Santanu remarried because Ganga left him. And so, and Ganga, that time Maharaj Santanu married Satyavati. And then they, they had, uh, uh, the child was called Vichitravirya. And Vichitravirya was supposed to get married and Bhishma went and get, got some wives for him, brought three sisters. Amba, Ambika, Ambalaka, huh? and then the one woman said, well, I'm, so, I'm already engaged, I'm supposed to marry this other king. So he said, oh, okay, then you can go. <laughs> and she went back, and when she went back, then her fiancé would have nothing to do with her because you've already been touched by another man, so I don't want you now. And so she came back to Bhishma and said, you should marry me. But Bhishma had vowed to be brahmachari. <laughs> anyway, in this way, then that woman came and in the Mahabharata and she's responsible for the, the death of Bhishma. Oh, so all of these things, cursing, counter-cursing. There's a nice conversation takes place between Mother Ganga and Samudra, the ocean. When we go on Parikrama, we go to Samudra Gar, right? Samudra Gar, originally named Samudra Gati, <laughs> where the ocean comes, Gati. Uh, so the ocean, the Samudra, had a conversation with Mother Ganga. And Samudra is telling Mother Ganga, you're so fortunate that you're able to see all the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord, He's performing his pastimes in your waters. Every day he's coming and taking his bath there. Mother Ganga said to Samudra, No, you know, I'm not so fortunate that he, he, he's going to take sannyas. He's going to leave me and he's going to go to Puri and he'll bathe in your waters every day. While he's here in Mayapur, he's bathing in my water, in Ganga. But when he takes sannyas, he'll go and live at Puri. And he'll bathe in the sea, the ocean every day. But Samudra told Mother Ganga, No, no. Yeah, for some time it's like that. For some years he will bathe in my water. But he eternally resides here in Mayapur, in Navadvip Dam. Because this is the Dam. And the Dham is the place where the Lord resides eternally. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always bathing in the water of the Ganga here. Not just for some time, he's always here in the Ganga at the water. So it's his eternal abode. So this nice conversation between the ocean and the Ganga took place there at Samudragar. Another interesting pastime which took place on the banks of the Ganga was when Keshava Kashmiri came. Keshava Kashmiri is Digvijay, conquering everywhere. And he had come to Navadvip to continue conquering all the pundits because Navadvip was the center of learning in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when all the pundits heard that Keshava Kashmiri was coming and that he was Digvijay, then they all said, oh, oh I, have, I have to go somewhere. They all made excuses to leave or to go and hide. And they, they said, I'll come back after some time. Just, uh, you know, they, they, were, they didn't want to meet Keshava Kashmiri. Because Keshava Kashmiri was challenging everyone to debate. Because he's Digvijay, he's all conquering. So he came there in Navadvip, and only Nimai Pandit, practically, he's the only one there, and he's only a teenage, teenager, young man. 
He'd opened his own school and he's teaching his students. And they're sitting on the bank of the Ganga. At the side of the Ganga, Lord Nimai Pandit is sitting there with his students and he's giving them class. When Keshava Kashmiri comes by with his procession, riding on an elephant with so many followers, a big entourage, and they all come. And so Keshava Kashmiri hears that up ahead is Nimai Pandit. And he's a learned scholar in Navadweep, although he's a young man. So Keshava Kashmiri comes to meet Nimai Pandit. And they discuss together. And Nimai Pandit requests Keshava Kashmiri, kindly compose some poetry in glorification of Mother Ganga. So Keshava Kashmiri immediately begins to recite poetry. Spontaneously he composes verses in glorification of Mother Ganga. Prabhupada's very first disciple, maybe you, have you seen that movie, The World of Hare Krishna? There was Prabhupada's very first disciple. He was from Delhi, over there in Delhi. Uh, there, uh, I forget his name now. Anyway, he was a very learned scholar. Prabhupada's very first disciple in, in India, before he went to the West, Prabhupada had a disciple. And this, this, he was a learned scholar. He also could compose poetry. When he would speak, sometimes he would compose verses of poetry. So Keshava Kashmiri had this ability also because he was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati. And every day he would do his puja and worship of Mother Saraswati. And with the blessings of Mother Saraswati, he was able to compose poetry spontaneously, like the wind, like the blowing wind. Just like here in Mayapur, you know, the wind blows pr very strong. Even last night, there was some blowing wind for some time. So, his poetry, like that. And so Nimai Pandrit sat there and listened to him compose maybe a hundred verses in glorification of Mother Ganga. And Nimai Pandit says, oh, this is very nice. You're really a great scholar. You have all the blessings of Brihaspati. <laughs> Some people have, have that. So, but there are some faults in your poetry. And that was a, a stunner. It was like a slap in the face. And Keshava Kashmiri said, What? In my poetry? You dare to say there's some fault? Show me, tell me, where is this, what? And then Nimai Pandit says, yes, in the 63rd verse, you made these mistakes, there are these errors, there are... <laughs> and Nimai Pandit not only had memorized the verses, but he had analyzed them grammatically, and he had found out the faults in them, and he explained them to Keshava Kashmiri. And in this way, Keshava Kashmiri was humbled in the presence of all the students and all of his followers. And so that night, Keshava Kashmiri prayed to Mother Saraswati, have I done some offense? I must have offended you. You, you, allow, you let me be defeated by this young man. But Mother Saraswati told Keshava Kashmiri, no, he is no ordinary young man. He is my worshipful Lord and Master. So Keshava Kashmiri then came and he surrendered to Nimai Pandit. So this took place on the banks of the river Ganga here. The river Ganges was also a place where Lord Chaitanya met Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami came 
he had met Lord Chaitanya before at uh, Ramakeli, but then he came to meet Lord Chaitanya and they met in uh, Prayagraj. Prayagraj is the name, right? But they met at the Sangam where the Ganges and the Yamuna meet. Now it's called Prayagraj. And it was at the Das Ashwamedha Ghat on the banks of the Ganga where Lord Chaitanya instructed Rupa Goswami for ten days in the science of devotion. So very appropriate that Lord Chaitanya chose to speak to Rupa Goswami, his Rupa Shiksha there at, on the banks of the river Ganga at the Dash Ashwamedha Ghat. Srimad Bhagavatam also describes how Ajamila, after he witnessed the, con the, con the, the conflict between the Yamadutas and the Vishnu Dutas, then he understood he had to leave home to try to save himself from his plight. So he left home and he went to Hardwar. And he went to Hardwar, took shelter of a Vishnu temple there in Hardwar. And in the Vishnu temple, he was able to absorb himself in the hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And it said he gave up his body on the banks of the Ganga. We're also told how Jagannath Mishra when he was leaving his body, that they brought him down to the Ganga and placed him in the Ganga, that he could give up his body while he's in the Ganga. We'd, we're not so much familiar with that ritual, but that's how it's described in the, in the uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat, is it? Or Chaitanya Mango, like that. So, so many wonderful pastimes take place in relation to Mother Ganga. It is said, wherever the Ganga flows, that is the holy place. So, the holy place is purified by the presence of the devotees as well. It's not only the the water of the Ganga, but it's the presence of the devotees also. But as devotee 